Finishing up our summer sermon series, um, our value statements as we reflect on worship. Um, and we have a good gift of worship this morning. We're being led in many of our songs today by Joanna. Um, so we're thankful for her work this morning um, as we continue with this gathering song, Hymn 835. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 5, and 6.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have a new canticle of praise that we're learning this morning. Um, So Joanna's going to sing the first verse for us alone so you can hear what it sounds like. And then we will join together with verses 1, 3, and 4 for the rest. God, we give you glory. We sing alleluia, for you are Lord, and you have healed and rescued and released us and shown us your love. Gather us in this place to live lives of gratitude for you. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated before we move to our scripture. I know, Avril. Um, We're going to hear our special music from Corbin this morning.
have our scripture. A reading from the book of Psalms. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks, or give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Please stand as we are led in this new hallelujah. It's going to be sung first by Joanna, and then we'll sing the second time with her. According to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. So, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, ten leopards approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. And then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And then he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And that one was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. So we're going to do something different today. What I need you to do is to grab a pencil out of the pew racks in front of you or a pen out of your purse. You're not going to be writing a lot, but you need, everyone needs to write three things down, Okay. So if you want to share that with a couple, then you're just going to likely argue about not having enough time or something. So so there you go. So the first thing you need to write down is that moment in worship. You can write this on the blank part of your bulletin or anywhere else. That moment in worship where you are most likely to encounter God. That moment in worship. What are we doing in worship where if you were a betting person, you would think, I'm going to have a God experience in that moment like the singing or the preaching or the rehearing the scripture or, or prayers or distribution of communion or prelude or postlude. When is it most often that you have a God experience, encounter God in worship? Write that down. What, what are we doing? The second thing I want you to write down is I want you to close your eyes right now, and I want you to picture the most grateful person you know. Who is the person that most often seems grateful to you, that is able to tie God to the marvel that happens in her life? (laughs) Who's, Who's that person that is the most grateful person you know? Write that person's name down.
The third and final thing I want you to write down is at 1117 on August 19th, 2018. So this minute right now, what are you most grateful for this minute? Not what are you most grateful for in your whole life, but this minute, what are you feeling grateful for right today, right this moment? What are you feeling grateful for? Write that down. Okay? Now, that wasn't the hard thing. This is the hard thing. We're going ha- to group you a little bit here, and that means I'm going to move some of you, if, if that'll be good. Um, and that'll annoy you, but that'll be fine. We're, 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 we're going we're gonna to have like two pews talk to each other is what we're going to do. And Pastor Liz is going to work on that side, and I'm going to work on this side. Peggy, I'm going to ask you to move back over here next to Lloyd and Linda, okay? There you go. You can leave your purse there. You'll come back and get it. And I can rifle through it during the worship, too. We'll go over there, okay? Bill, you might want to move back, too. Um, okay, you guys look good here. This might be too big of a group for you guys if you guys want to move back one, okay? And you guys are over here behind you, okay? Okay? This is okay, Mary Beth. You're going you're, you're gonna to gene and right there. So you guys are good. Um, in fact, why don't, I'll let you, th- do you guys be a group and you guys be a group, just a small group, okay? That'll make it easier for Mary Beth. Say hi to your people who we haven't met yet, okay? <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. Cindy, I'm going to send you down with Marsha and Nancy, and I'm going to make you five on this side, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, you're, you're perfect. So you, you just need to move over when we get to that point, okay? And you guys are perfect back here, so maybe... One of you guys needs to move closer, okay? Did she get all the way down to you guys? You guys are good right here. Uh, I could divide up. Why don't I do that? I'll take Jeff and Claire over here to Rose and Kay, and that'll leave Lori and Lily for you three in the back, okay? That'll kind of divide you into two groups. Yeah, we got them. Okay, I haven't put you to work yet, so stop talking. Okay, there you go. Ten lepers, right? Ten lepers are in a group outside the village. This is because in the day of Jesus, uh, leprosy made you unclean. And leprosy wasn't necessarily the disease of leprosy that we call today. It was pretty much any skin disease where something oozed from your body, okay? Okay. So anything that you were giving off bodily fluids on, those bodily fluids made you unclean. And you could not become clean again, able to be, which means able to be in the presence of God until a priest said you were clean, okay? And so if you had leprosy, your body was always oozing something, so that meant you were always unclean. So you could not be in the presence of God's community, which meant that you had to live away from people because just someone else being close to you meant that they were unclean, and then they couldn't be in God's presence. So you had to live away. And you can imagine what that means. That means you couldn't work because you worked with other people, you couldn't make money, you couldn't eat with your family, you couldn't, you couldn't provide for your family, you were isolated. So these lepers then, they tended to form little communities on the edge of villages because they had no one else. And those little communities would be communities that provided social community, and then they would pool their financial resources together too. And they basically lived by begging, by begging. But no one was to get near. If you notice, when, when they come, they don't, the Scripture says they didn't get near Jesus, they yelled to Jesus, right? Because a leper was supposed to yell outside a village, leper is near, so that you just didn't happen to bump into them, get some of their oozing stuff on you, and then you became unclean. That's who these ten guys are. So their life was miserable. I think we could see that, right? Their life was miserable. And so healing meant being brought back into community. So these 10 lepers, one of them, we don't know which one, maybe two of them, maybe three of them, but at least one of them believed enough in Jesus to say, hey guys, 
What do we got to lose? Let's yell and see if Jesus can heal us. And that's what they do. But Jesus doesn't really heal them right there, does he? He does something weird. He tells them to go see a priest. And like I said, they had to go see a priest once they were healed because sometimes your oozing stopped and you were healed. And then a priest would check you out, make sure nothing was coming out of you anymore. And then he would give you a ritual bath and do some prayers and, and, and you were good to go back into community. But Jesus told them to go see a priest even though they were still oozing. Faith brought them to Jesus, right? That he might be able to heal them. And now faith has to keep them as they go see a priest because a priest is not going to be too happy with these oozing lepers showing up at his doorstep. So as they journey to the priest, they're trusting that their leprosy is going to dry up by the time they find that priest. And on their journey, they were made clean. And on their journey, they were made clean. And nine do exactly what the priest or what Jesus told them to do. Nine go on to the priest. Nine are so delighted with what happens, they can't wait to get to that priest. Nine are thinking, oh my gosh, we might be sitting down for a good lamb dinner tonight with our family. They cannot wait to get, nine do exactly what Jesus told them to do. They're going to that priest. That priest is going to say, you're good to go. Water, prayers, and they are home. Nine's life has been changed by Jesus. And they see a priest. And one turns around. Doesn't do what Jesus tells them to do. One is so overjoyed with gratitude that he has to stop what he's doing to give thanks to Jesus who saved him. And when he encounters Jesus, he discovers God. And when we discover God, we worship. And that's what he does. Prostrate lays flat in front of Jesus. You don't worship Jesus. You worship God that you discover in Jesus. And when he came back to Jesus to say thanks, he found God and he worshiped. It's our gratitude that brings us to worship. This value that we've saved for last, the core value of our, of our faith life here at Messiah, is worship. And it starts shaped by our gratitude for God. Shaped by our gratitude for God. It's our gratitude for what God has done that brings us in these doors, that gets us out of bed, that gets us in the car, that gets us into this space. And so I want you to share first in your group, what are you most grateful for this moment today at 1135? 26. What are you most grateful for right now? You won't all get a chance to speak because I'm not going to give you that long. So if you get to share this, maybe someone else can share something else later as we go on. So turn and talk to your group.
Okay, while 10, while 10 people had something to be thankful for that day, only one showed up in church. <laughs> while 10 people had something to be thankful for that day, only one person actually worshiped God that day. The other nine probably got around to worship the next week or the week after next, but that day, only one stopped all the priorities that they had and got to worship. And Jesus is amazed at who it was. It wasn't who he would have guessed. It wasn't who the listeners to Jesus that day would have guessed. It wasn't who the, the readers of Luke would have guessed. It was the Samaritan, the foreigner. It, it wasn't the, the child of God, the, the child of Israel. It, it was somebody else. It wasn't the one who was most aware of who God was who had been raised in the faith already. It was somebody who might never have known who the God of Israel was until that moment. That's who shoved all those other priorities aside and said, nope, this is what I need to do right now. And, and that makes me think that maybe for people of faith, like most everybody in this room, maybe it is that the more we get to know God. <laughs> the more familiar we are with God, the harder it could be to marvel at the works of God. Because when we, start, when we stop marveling at the works of God, our gratitude gets smaller and smaller. Oh, that's another pretty rainbow, right? <laughs> when we start getting used to God, we stop feeling as gracious towards God. And maybe it's something about trying to live in that gratitude all the time. I know for me it feels like that. I, I have to be in worship most Sundays of the year, as you can guess, right? So my worship attendance is usually pretty stellar. But because of our employee handbook now and my years and years and years and oh my gosh, years of being here, I now get six weeks of vacation according to the employee handbook of Messiah Luther Church. And if you have a problem with that, council like three years ago decided that. So go talk to them. And I've already taken four of those Sundays. My, last, uh, my fourth Sunday was just this last August, uh, last week. And I have not worshipped one of those vacation Sundays. I've been in church every other Sunday of this year, but none of those four Sundays that I've had off. And as I was thinking about it yesterday afternoon, I couldn't remember the last vacation Sunday that I came to church. And it didn't used to be like that. My kids in the 90s when we were going on vacations uh, they have stories of me taking them to some podunk church in the middle of nowhere because we weren't going to miss church no matter what. We were going to give thanks to God, but now, now what's different? What's changed? I'm not any less faithful, but I don't find enough reasons to go to church when I don't have to or when there's another priority ahead of that. And this morning, I don't want to worry about why we're not at church, because we all got reasons why we're not at church. Instead, I want us to think, what kind of person can be constantly grateful to God in order for them to not go to church that Sunday would just seem too crazy? No way. I can't go see the priest. I got to go and worship God. And that's why I wanted you to imagine that grateful person you know. And maybe start thinking of her or him and, and, and how they bear themselves in the world. And, and, and maybe in that thinking of them, you'll find a, a path, breadcrumb, to become somebody like them in your gratefulness. And that's what I'll do too. So share who that grateful person is. Remember, if, uh, try to get everybody to talk in your group. Go. Okay. Is that okay? Were they like, they didn't?
So we, so we saved this last value because it's the core value of who we are. So this is, this is what it means to be the body of Christ, is that we're people who worship. That's why it's the number one value on this list. We could get rid of everything else, but we couldn't get rid of this and still be the church. This is who we must be. Shaped by our gratitude, by the gratitude we have from Jesus in our baptism. We glorify God through worship, through spirit-filled worship. Shaped by our gratitude, we worship. I was thinking about this 10th leper, right? He turned around to give thanks to Jesus before he then went on himself, I hope, to the priests to be blessed and, and brought back into community. He turned around to give thanks. It's almost like that gratitude is what gets us in the car in the morning here. But it isn't until we come to church that we encounter God. It wasn't until he came and found Jesus that he recognized God living so powerfully in Jesus. It's what makes the difference between what we're doing here as, as not just a hymn sing, you know, not just a, a fellowship uh, opportunity, but worship. It's because we encounter God in the midst of our gathering, week in and week out. And, and we encounter God in the midst of our gathering, no matter how miserable we are at gathering, okay? As worship leaders, I can go through the mistakes we've already made this morning in worship, right? I mean, and, and, and believe me, they're, they're lodged in my head. Pastor Liz again came out at the wrong time in that opening thing. She did that at 8 o'clock too. And she forgot to tell you not to sing those two verses. And we talked about that. All right? What are we doing here? Yeah, even in the midst of, of, of our very humanness, leading of worship, our brokenness, our mistakes, some that make us laugh, some that make us shiver, go, oh. God shows up. It's not about us. It's about God's promise to be here when we gather. In fact, one of the most memorable times I have of experiencing God in worship, one of the most powerful moments that I have experiencing God in worship was 20 years ago when my Aunt Glenna died. And, and, and Paige and I went down to Southern Illinois, as she used to say, and, and, and for her funeral. And she was a woman of the church, and it was this little cute church in this small town in Southern Illinois. And, and, and we had a wonderful worship service. And after the worship service, they carried her casket out to the graveyard, right, right outside the doors. And, and, and they lowered her in the midst of this carrying out right into the ground. And then we all gathered around this empty hole with Aunt Glenna's coffin in it now and us all around it. And her best friend, who was 85, 86 herself, I suppose, her best friend saying, how great thou art. And she was horrible. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I don't know who told her she could sing, but it felt like the train had gone a long time ago. And it was the most holy moment in worship I think I've ever had. That this woman who loved this other woman so much sang with such passion to her friend and to God on this beautiful spring day without a cloud in the sky outside. It was wonderful. God shows up. God shows up. Pastor Liz and I had a wonderful conversation this week about when is it in worship that you experience God showing up? When's the most likely moment in worship? And it's different for pastors, right? I mean, worship is a whole different experience when you're, when you're trying to keep all the, the buses moving on time and everything else. But, but still, every week, I had an answer for her. It, it, it's during the distribution of communion. I used to have a, a lead pastor who used to d uh, distribute the wafers for communion like he was giving out poker chips, right? His hand would move so fast. 
And, and for me, it, it is such an intimate moment of the body of Christ when we all eat together. That, that no matter how bad the sermon might be that I preached or, 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 or the sound system and, and, or might, might have gone wrong in the middle of that solo or, or whatever happens, I can count on when you come forward and I see your face and I say the body of Christ. I'm saying the body of Christ often to someone I've known for years. Mike, the body of Christ. I've met your kids. I met some of your grandkids. I know Ethel. I know what you did before you retired. I know all that. I know the gifts you give of music here at Messiah. I know that you went out in the cold for years and changed that sign in the sweating heat. Mike, you're part of my body of Christ. And I'm sharing this with you now. And, and that gets me every time. And even if I don't know you, I, I, I look at you and I think to myself, what gifts are you bringing? <laughs> what gifts might I have the honor and the opportunity to unpack? What gifts might I share with you? How are you going to be part of the body of Christ here now? My body of Christ that God has blessed me with. And that's the moment in worship every time week in or week out, no matter whatever else goes wrong, that God shows up and we can't mess up. So I want you finally to share with your small group that moment in worship that week after week you're most likely to bump into God that you wrote at the beginning of this service. Share that with us, with your group, please. Stand. Shaped by our gratitude, we worship. Shaped by our gratitude, we find the time, even though there are other things we could be doing good things, valuable pursuits. We still worship. Shaped by our gratitude, we worship, and when we do, God shows up. Every week, week after week, God shows up. Let's pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Holy God, our hearts are grateful this morning that we have encountered you the body and blood of Christ and the flesh and blood of our neighbors and the bread and wine of our meal and the songs and in the prayers and the preaching. Holy God, we give thanks that we have encountered you. And we pray for all those who couldn't be here this morning, who couldn't be here because the illness kept them away, because vacation and travel has put them in other places, 
because family activities have changed their, their lifestyle. We pray that they encounter you wherever they are, too, Lord. We pray that they have a powerful moment of Christ as that 10th leper, as us this morning. And God, we pray for those who are sick or ill this morning. We especially pray for Jean Lannis as her family gathers at the loss of her mother. We pray for Kimberly Berry, Meg Reidler, Harlan Soppy, Christine Ickes, Susan Franklin, Lauren Blake, Holly Hessler, Mary Hodge, Julie Searles, Karen Butler, Tracy Sherrick, Roger Solt, Deb Drum, Martha Keplin, Andy Sir, Don Searles, Dorothy Kuhn, Stacy Thatcher, Carolyn March, Jennifer Solt, Amelia Patterson, and others named aloud now. Holy God, we are grateful this morning. Fill our hearts to bursting with the gratitude of being saved by Jesus. Holy God, we are grateful this morning. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's love and God's peace with one another now. She knows.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. We thank you for what you have provided. Receive our thanks. Receive it so that it may serve you and worship to you. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. With joyful hearts, let us join in with all the saints and sing this unending God, we give you thanks. We prostrate ourselves before you in worship for all that you have given us, for all that you have done and rescued us from. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus. And we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, come to us in this meal. Unite us by this, your food of heaven, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. All are welcome to the table God has set. Thank you. you may be seated as we invite our assistants forward, and then all may come and join in this meal.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. God, strengthened in this meal, send us out. Send us out to live lives that shine your light and express our thanks so that all might see. In your name we pray. Amen. Got uh, several announcements today. I'll try and move through them quickly. Uh, one, it's the last day to sign up for our Habitat for Humanity Workday. Um, so you can sign up for that out in the Welcome Center. They will be working on Saturday. Um, so that's a good chance to just, you know, get some labor in, right? Um, help out, build a home uh, with Habitat for Humanity. So sign up out in the Welcome Center. Also going on this week, uh, Senior Saints and the Chancel Choir start up. Rehearsals begin. Um, you can check your details for that in the bulletin board. And then we've got a whole lot going on on Sunday. So Sunday the 26th. One, we have our teacher student blessing. Um, that will be at the 930 and at the 11. Um, so invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, um, teachers, students. Students can bring their backpacks. Um, and we'll be doing a blessing for both. It'll also be the last day that uh, we are taking in supplies for Yela, Liberia, which is the hometown of one of our members, Yogi Jeffy. Um, so we'll also be blessing those supplies in that service. And then uh, we'll have hot dogs and a bouncy house and a book fair going on. Um, so just lots of fun stuff uh, on that Sunday. And then that evening, we have the Getting to Know You party. Um, so you can sign up for that out in the Welcome Center. Let uh, Kay and Doug Arnold know that you'll be attending. Um, it's a good chance to get to know others from all the different services. There's food um, and drinks and uh, just a chance to talk with one another, good conversation. Um, so that'll be also on the 26th. Meanwhile, the high schoolers will be meeting at the same time at 5.30 on that Sunday. We have a high school a youth group kickoff and orientation at 5.30. Uh, teenagers and parents are invited to that so that we can talk about the whole year, and dinner will be provided. I'm not done about that Sunday, though. There's one more thing. So that morning, confirmation has their orientation at 10.40 a.m., uh, between the services so that you uh, parents can uh, learn more about the year as confirmation gears up. So yeah, that means there is something for every generation on that Sunday. So it should be a good day. So everyone come out on the 26th. With that, I invite you to stand for our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. Amen. Amen. We are going out with this new sending song, and we are being led in percussion by Hannah and Sophia. And, oh, it looks like even Grandma came out. So, good. So we have a wonderful, wonderful gift of music. So let us join together.